This episode of God Family and Guns. We are again at one of our favorite places, Blue Steel Gun and Ammo in Raytown, Missouri, with one of our favorite people, Maggie. Hey, everybody. And we are here today. We are talking about um, specifically when a woman is uh, coming in, she's not very familiar with guns and she but she's feeling like maybe she lives alone or she works in a dangerous place or just really where she goes about her daily life she's feeling like she needs protection and I just want to clarify before we go too far down this path we recognize there are lots of women out there who are experts when it comes to firearms who are very comfortable uh, we know that that is not to imply that just because you're a woman you don't know anything but the reality is there are also a lot of women out there who are not familiar not comfortable with firearms but the reality is the world we're living in and perhaps their circumstances have changed maybe they're living alone for the first time or just something has happened to them and they're feeling like they need to protect themselves uh, this isn't their area of expertise. This isn't something that they're comfortable with, but they're wanting to make a purchase. So those are the women that we are speaking to. And I would imagine in your role, you see those women come in. And so can you offer some good, like what are your top tips on, I come in to see you, I really, I just know that I want something to be able to protect myself. How do you guide me? Nobody wakes up on day one and knows everything about guns. You have to start somewhere. There is a learning process. Ask lots of questions. If you see something on a shelf that catches your eye, point it out, ask to see it. Say, what makes this a good gun in your recommendation? Now, or maybe why would this not be a good choice? Exactly. For me? Now, ladies, um, of all, and gentlemen, of all um, skill levels and of all, yeah, ladies and gentlemen of all skill levels have preferences on what they like, be it whether the way it looks or the way it feels in their hands. Personally, I would rather have something that is comfortable um, and something that I am comfortable with, with all of the mechanisms. When you pick up a gun, the first that you look at, most people are drawn to a semi-automatic. Uh, they look cool, it's what you see in TV and the movies, your favorite shows, your favorite actors. Most of the time, it's familiar. So it, they're it, wielding these. Yeah. Your brothers, your uncles, your sisters, your nieces, everyone, the first thing they think of when they think of a gun is a semi-automatic, black, cool looking, or not cool looking, menacing looking in some cases, guns. Um, if you're looking at one of these, the first thing you want to look for is how easy the controls and features are to use. You have to get a bullet up here in the chamber. You have a heavy spring to contend with in here that has lots of pressure behind it to get it to work. Not everyone has the grip strength to work that. It's not easy for everyone, especially if it's something you've never encountered before. Make sure before you buy that you can use the slide release that will release that slide, that you can pull this back to get one round in the chamber in there. If there is a trigger guard or a lock on here, ask if you can have it removed and you can try the trigger and you can try everything first. Um, you want to be sure that you can get your magazine loaded to the maximum capacity by yourself if you're alone. Um, there's easy ways to make sure you can do that too. You can leave it loaded and it'll relax the spring that's in there so that by the time you get to the end of the magazine, you're, you've got it full capacity. Um, so no matter what you're looking for, uh, you have to be able to make sure that you can use all the function, functions, features, and controls of it. Slide release right there. Um, does it have a decocker with a hammer on the back? Is it striker fired like this one here? If you don't know the difference, ask. So there are no, I think a lot of times 
particularly when we're moving into an area that is not our comfort level, we don't want to appear unknowledgeable. We don't want people to think we're stupid. You know, there's that perception. And so really there are no dumb questions. There's absolutely not. Ask all of the questions. And I would also say probably if, if you go somewhere and you're asking your questions and someone is making you feel like you're foolish, that's probably not the right place for you. Go, Ask, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Um, certain places will cater to certain skill levels. It's just the way it is no matter what industry you're in. Um, find someone that makes it simple for you to understand. That's why there are awesome channels like God, Family, and Guns that go through and ask a lot of these hard questions or get you thinking about questions that you wouldn't normally ask. Um, what I like about the difference between your semi-automatics and your revolvers. Your revolvers uh, will sometimes carry less than what a semi-automatic will. In this case, this is what I would consider a small, lightweight carry gun. This revolver could also be considered a small, lightweight carry gun. Surprise, surprise! Same capacity, mm -hmm. six rounds. Um, granted, you can get one extra in here, but that's helpful if you have more than six people coming at you. Um, practice is always the key to make sure that you can hit what you're aiming at. So once you get one of these, you want to make sure that you can easily use it. The wonderful thing about revolvers is the maintenance. Yes, guns take maintenance, just like vehicles. Uh, you have to keep them up and running. You have to know how to clean them. You have to know how to care for them. You have to know how to store them so that when, if you need yeah. it, it will be there reliably for you. The nice thing about a revolver is that once you load it up, everything is contained within that little revolving cylinder right there. To get it out, all you have to do is push one button and suddenly it's unloaded. Just like that. It's not sitting there trying to work a spring on a magazine or anything like that. Cleaning is even easier right through each of these marvelous little cylinders here and right down the barrel, wipe out inside and outside and you're done. With these, it gets a lot more involved to disassemble them, take them apart and make sure that you can work all of the parts and pieces. So it's really thinking about the whole process. The entire process. What is cleaning going to involve? A semi-automatic has multiple pieces. Your revolver, that's it. That's all you're cleaning right there. This involves toothbrushes and, you know, scrubbing and the same amount of gun oil and wipe down techniques and procedures, but here you have to do it on a much finer, smaller scale while not screwing up any of the internal mechanisms on it. This, I love the simplicity of. You Absolutely. can't go wrong. So you just, it's what you're comfortable with. My comfort level started with something that was easy to maintain. Once I got comfortable with it, once I was comfortable shooting it, um, I moved up to something that looked a little cooler. It's still not my first choice. I still kind of have a passion for my little revolvers, but it's unique to each person, whatever you want. Well, and what I hear you saying is, you know, you mentioned in the beginning that this is kind of the, what, just from TV and from everything we see, this looks familiar, so we might naturally gravitate towards that, but really then in understanding your comfort level and what you want and to not let the familiarity and the look necessarily be, this may be the right decision for you, but not letting that drive the Don't let what you see on TV. I apologize, but TV and the movies, your favorite actors, sometimes they lie to you. Um, they make it look no. a lot easier than it really is. They make it look like there's never any hang-ups or jams with these. Semi-automatics have more working parts, which means there's more to go wrong on something like that. If something hangs up on a semi-automatic gun, meaning a bullet gets caught in there that doesn't go off, or you can't get the slide back, or whatever the problem may be, in that split second moment when you really, really, really need it and suddenly it doesn't work for you, it's not like you can tell the person that's... Hang on just a minute. Exactly. 
Time out here. I'll be right back. Um, give me just a moment. Let me fix this. Okay, time back in. Let's go. I know you're pissed at me. Thanks for taking that break so that I could, you know, defend myself against you. The nice thing about a revolver, once you load it up, it doesn't matter if you need it today or two weeks or months or even years down the line, as long as it's kept in good functioning condition and loaded, you pull the trigger, it goes bang, and then you keep pulling until it's done going bang, and it it's never going to fail you. It's the most reliable, wonderful friend you can ever have. They're incredible. I just, I can't say enough good things about them. Well, and lastly, I think probably the most important takeaway, too, is, you know, we're speaking to for the woman who is wanting to protect herself, she's she's shopping for the worst case scenario, hope it never happens. Um, she's This is out of her comfort level. I would think the very worst thing you could do is come in, you make a great choice, you make your purchase, and then you go home and you put it on a shelf or in a box or wherever. It is. You need to go use it. practice. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. It's not enough to have it if you never That's make yourself true. comfortable. And here's another key. It doesn't matter what caliber it is. I don't care if it's a rubber band gun, if it's a 22, if it's a 50 cal. I don't want to be on that other end of that barrel. And I would hope nobody else wants to be on the other end of a loaded barrel either. So what you need to do is make sure you're comfortable with it. Guns are loud. They make a lot of noise. Some of them have kick or recoil. That's the inertia that transfers from the explosion of the bullet in the barrel to your wrists and your hands. That's the snap, the recoil, or the kick that you feel. A 22 is just as lethal as the other calibers out there. You can unload a very large quantity of 22 ammunition into a target very quickly. They will go in, they don't usually come out, Instead, they worm their way through a person. It might not knock them down and be that fall on the floor like you see um, in the movies or TV, but trust me, they're not going to get too far. Uh, what it is is if you're comfortable with it, you have to be, you make yourself comfortable with the noise. It's like going to a fireworks show. It's loud. Um, it's annoying. But the perks are that you can defend yourself and... Um, I don't know. Just I like to pretend they're tiny little dragon cannons in my hand. I practice lots, but the coolest part is having someone videotape you while you're practicing and then slow it down in slow motion. You are holding a very tiny little cannon that expels this breath of fire out the end and in slow motion, it's really cool. Take some pictures, post it on your fridge. Congratulations, you did it. And it's awesome. And you know that you can protect yourself. Well, Maggie, thank you uh, so much. Always wonderful information. Uh, we are going to include a link to Blue Steel uh, on this video. Um, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe. You can now find us on Facebook and also visit our website at www.godfamilyandguns.org. Finally, if you want another way to support this channel, you can always become a patron. The link uh, for that is below. And lastly, but by far most importantly, please, uh, we take prayer requests. It is a ministry to us, so we take that very seriously, and please don't ever hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you.